I think I was levitating. I actually don't believe I was touching anything. Uh, the first thing you have to remember, I don't know what you've heard from other people, but most of us didn't believe we would land on Apollo 11. Are you, did the people told you that? Did, in their opinion, that they thought we would make it the first time? I, I, had, I didn't believe we would ever land the first time. But we did, okay? And when it started getting down close, I don't think I was touching my chair. I actually believe I was levitating somewhere over that chair. You know, that's the way I felt. I don't know whether, you know, I know I wasn't levitating because I can't do that, but that's the way I felt. It was so intense that I don't think most people really fully realized what we did. I know I didn't. And I'll tell you a little story of what happened to me. Um, I was living in an apartment up on the Gulf Freeway. We landed and we gave a go for T1 and so on. We went on and we did a shift change. Well, I went home and I slept for a couple hours. I got cleaned up and I was going back to work and I stopped to eat some breakfast. And between Monroe and Edgebrook in those days, there was a Dutch kettle, you know, one of these little coffee shops with the round stools. And I walked in there and, you know, I knew we had landed on the moon and I was proud and all that and everything. And, but I didn't, because I wasn't out there with the public when it all happened, I really wasn't that jived as to what the real effect was going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? You know, there were people going crazy all over the world. If you'll see these pictures on the movies and the newsreels. You'll see thousands of people standing in Times Square watching this stuff and so on, you know? So you weren't, you weren't into all that. You were so intense on what was going on and what you were looking at and so on. Well, I picked up a paper, which I have today. I still have that paper. And I walked into the Dutch kettle and I sat down up at the counter, planked my paper down, and I ordered my scrambled eggs. And I'm sitting there reading the paper and so on, and two guys walk in and sit down on the two stools next to me. They were a little bit older, and uh, they sit down and they get their coffee and they're waiting for their breakfast, and they start talking. Well, you know, they're the same, they're, they're right next to me. And one of them says to the other one, he said, you know, I went all through World War II, I landed at Normandy on D-Day. And he said, it was, when I, it was an incredible day, an incredible life, and I went all the way through, you know, Paris and on into Berlin and so wherever the heck it was he was talking about. He said, but yesterday was the day that I felt the proudest to be an American. Well, when he said that, I lost it. It, it all of a sudden hit me as to what we had done. You know, and I just threw my money down, grabbed my paper, and walked out, got in the car, and started to cry. And as you can tell, I'm getting a little choked up right now talking about. It. You know, then I realized what we had done and what had happened, but I hadn't until that moment. It hadn't hit me. You know, it wasn't like sitting in the control center and you know, God, we're here. You know, and giving a go. That that was great, and it was a, a tremendous experience and, and relief actually. You know, they were alive and we had made it and so on, but it was just a complete different feeling. I, I had now joined up with the rest of the world as to what had happened. And finally I got myself together and I got, drove off and I went to work, you know. But until that moment, I didn't really have the, the feeling effect of what had happened.